everyone to our first video for Kickbox. That's your Keep It Creative Kick um, that we are launching, and we're so glad that you joined us today. Our first one is gonna be on tints and shades, and it's a painting box, which is a lot of fun. So you're gonna get your box, and you're gonna open it up, and we're gonna get creative. So we're gonna switch to seeing my hands because that's gonna show you all the steps you need to create beautiful, one-of-a-kind pieces of artwork because here at Kick, we believe that everyone is an artist inside and there's no wrong way to make art. So get your creative caps on and let's go. Okay, so in our box we have our nine by 12 sheet of Bristol paper and this paper is a heavyweight paper that holds up really well to acrylic paint which is the type of paint that we're gonna be using. So we have our little tray of acrylic paint, comes with this cute little bow. So let's get that open. And each one is labeled. So we have some red, blue, and yellow, which is really great because you can make any color under the rainbow with yellow, blue, and red. Those are primary colors. And then we have some black and some white, and this is all acrylic paint. So if you, can protect your work surface that would be great because it does stain it also stains clothing so don't wear a shirt that you really like or put a smock on that's very very important and then this here is your palette and that's where we're going to be doing our our mixing of colors our tints and our shades all right so then also in our box here we have a great set of brushes we have a, a variety here here i have round brushes um, this is a thin one it's a number one and then I have another one another oop, another round brush that's a number five and then I have two um, long handled brushes um, some people prefer to use these on easel painting if you like to work up and down on an easel um, a lot of artists like to use that because they feel like they have more um, control with their arm with a longer handle so it's totally up to you what you're most comfortable with um, I'm gonna be using the short handled round brushes and we're gonna create our tints and shades forest. So first thing we need to do is squeeze a little bit of white onto our palette. There we go, and as you'll see, um, the kick box comes with lots of paint. And in addition to your palette, there's also this shiny waxy paper. And this is called palette paper. So some people don't like to wash a palette when they're done. They just really feel like that takes up too much time. So you can easily squirt your paints onto the palette paper as well. And then you can um, mix and do everything you would on a plastic palette right on the paper, but at the end you can toss it. So that's an option for you as well. All right, so we have our white and we have some black. Nice thick, creamy, good quality acrylic paints here we're using. And I'm going to do, you know what, I think I'm gonna do a red forest today. But you can choose if you wanna do a yellow forest, a blue forest, orange, green, whatever you like to do. So I have my three colors here. All right, so I have my, my white, my black, my red. And I also have uh, just a little, paper napkin and some water for cleaning brushes in between. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I am going to create my first tint. So a tint is when you take one color and you mix it with white and then it becomes a tint. So if you take red and mix it with white, you're going to get pink and that's a tint of red. So I'm gonna wet my brush, tap off the excess. I'm gonna just get a little touch of red and I'm gonna mix it into all of the white and it's changing it ever so slightly like you can barely tell that that's not white anymore it's a very 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 light shade and I'm going to paint my paper all the way left and all the way right again I'm working on a surface I'm getting a little more water I'm working on a surface so if I go over the edge of my page I can easily clean this later so I'm not worried about it but if you're working at your dining room table that you love definitely protect your work surface okay so I'm getting some of this on there pulling that down all right so I have approximately two inches painted in this first light tint now I'm gonna Get my brush wet again, and I'm gonna dip a little bit more red. 
and I'm going to mix into that same pile of white. Now you can see it's getting darker. Let's mix that all up. Okay, and I'm going to be doing the same thing here. Now you can see it's a lot darker. I'm going a little bit quickly just for the sake of time on our video because if you're like me you like to get to the good stuff in the videos and if you feel like your brush is dragging um, that just means like you're getting like little dry sections here you can always just tap it back in your water and that will make it a lot more fluid acrylic paints wash up with soap and water All right, we're getting down there. And you also might notice when you're painting on paper that it may buckle a little bit. Don't be concerned. Once it dries, it does dry flat. And if you have any resistant buckling, once it's completely dry, you can always flatten it under a pile of books and you'll be back in business. All right, now I'm gonna blend this tint of red up a little bit into this one. Just a little bit. Again, all the way left and all the way right. Almost looks like we're painting a wall here, but we'll get to the good stuff very soon. We're building it up. Okay, so I've come down about three quarters of the way. And again, you get to make lots of decisions when you're doing these projects in the kick boxes. There's no right or wrong answer. That's very important. Okay. I'm gonna grab a little more red on my brush and mix it into that same pile that we just made. And I'll get a touch, just a touch darker. So I'll put some here, you can see it's just a little bit darker. So now I'm gonna start creating my forest floor. So instead of just a straight line, I'm gonna add some, maybe some hills here. And then maybe this might go up over here a little bit and then down, whatever feels good to you. And then I'm gonna carry that down a little bit more. So this is my forest floor here. Okay, so there's our forest floor there. Now I'm going to create the tree. And I'm gonna have this one go all the way up, right off the page. And I'm just gonna do a slightly triangular base coming into my forest floor. And then another one coming up here. These are some big guys that live back here. And then we can add some branches. Y's, I always think of them as little Y's. With the letter Y. Branches, some people like really gnarly ones with lots of waves. If you feel like you have too much paint on your brush, you could just do a little roll like this and that helps reduce too much paint on there. Um, maybe look at some trees if you have some outside to look at. 
looking at examples from nature always helps. Now we're doing these type of trees for this tutorial, but if you liked pine trees, you could paint pine trees. If you like a cactus, paint a cactus. Whatever it is that you like. And as we add more of the tints and the shades to this project, it'll look like our forest is getting deeper and deeper. All right, so that's gonna be that layer of the forest. And now I'm gonna add even more red to this. I'm gonna do Two brushes full. I'm gonna add that. And, and these little wells on the palette are really great for mixing colors. You can kind of pull it in from the side. Okay, so here comes my forest floor again. Down a little bit. Forest floor, and we can get some more of our paint and create some trees. Put leaves on your trees if you would like it to be spring or summer. I'm here in the Northeast, so we get all of the seasons. Oh, palm trees too. I guess my Floridian friends might enjoy making some palm trees. here right off the page and you can always start and stop if you feel like that's all the time you had for one day you could stop here and pick it up again a different day plenty of paint. My only recommendation would be finish working with the tint or shade that you create as a stopping point just because it'll be very difficult to mix that exact shade up again. So personalized. to see that it looks like it's kind of a misty forest and we're getting some depth. Depth is when you can look at something and it looks like you could walk through it. That's creating some depth in your work. Make as many layers as you want. Each tint can be another layer. Now I'm going to rinse my brush. layer of just the red. I'm not going to mix it with anything. I'm going to use just the red as is. If you're doing blue, do the blue as is. If you're doing yellow, do the yellow as is. I'm going to make another forest floor.
So this is just red. It's not a tint and it's not a shade. It's just the red. I'm going rather quickly just for the sake of our video so you're not watching an hour long video. Sometimes adding things with little bends or little twists helps represent nature nicely too. Because if you look out in nature, no two trees are the same. So I hope no two people paint the same tree. I'd like everybody's trees to be your own. going from thick to thin as I push my brush down I push down and then slightly pull up and as you pull up your line gets thinner Again, at home, you can take your time. If you wanna add leaves, a quick way to add leaves is just by um, pouncing your brush over your branches. So if you wanted to add the look of some leaves, that's a nice way to use your brush to make it look like leaves. It's fun to try. It doesn't hurt to try. I'm going to rinse my brush. And now I'm going to create a shade. Now the tint was the color plus white. The shade is the color plus black. In painting, when you use black, it changes your main color very, very quickly. So instead of adding red to black, we're going to add the teeniest little bit of black to our red. So I'm just gonna put a tiny, tiny little touch on the end of my brush and mix that with the red and you'll see how quickly it changes it and how dark it becomes. When you mix the black with the red, it almost turns like a, it almost looks brown. created our first shade and we're gonna do another layer of forest floor
seeing that I'm getting a little low on red. So before I start adding trees, I'm going to mix a little bit more of that shade. So I'm going to go back and just grab a little more red. But there's so much paint in these kits that you have plenty to experiment with, which is awesome. A tiny little touch of the black. And you can see already I didn't make the same shade as I did the first time. It's so hard to recreate it. A slight bit lighter than what I had. So I'm just gonna kind of go over it with the new color I made so it's consistent. So now you can see we have the very first tint we made, the second tint we made um, as the background, and then the third one made our first layer of forest, and then that one made the next layer of forest, the solid red made a layer of forest, and our first shade made a layer of forest. You can have so many layers. Um, I'm just doing one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to have five forest layers, but you can do multiples. It's just as long as you go from lightest to darkest to create that receding depth that we're trying to create in this particular painting. So cleaning my brush out a little bit. Just gonna tap it on there. Gonna get some more black and mix it into that same shade we had just made. And you could see I didn't add very much black and it already changed that shade drastically. So less is best when you're making your shades because it only takes a little to change that color so much. All right, and I'm gonna create my last layer. On your last layer, this is where it's gonna be the closest to you. So that's where you're gonna see the most detail. So if you wanted to have roots on your trees or blades of grass sticking up or um, whatever tinier details that you would notice in a forest, as you were closer to it is what you can include in your very last layer. This tree, he's gonna come go off of the side here.
other people create besides a forest. Kick boxes are all about. Here's a technique. We'll teach you a little bit about it. And then you get to try and you have the materials included in your box to try. It might be a fun time to try another brush. I'm going to try my very tiny number one round brush. Get that a little wet. Get that in there. And now with this smaller brush, I can make even tinier branches come out here. Maybe I have some grass sticking up down here. It's going to flick out some paint and I'm going to start in the forest floor and flick up some grass. My brush needs to be a little wetter. That's another thing with these little sides. If you need your paint to be a little bit more fluid and not so thick, you can mix a little bit of water into your color on the side there and you can see how you can create a different consistency. easier to paint on top of a dry layer than painting on top of a wet layer. So since this is still really damp and I'm trying to create the grass blades, it's pulling up the layer that's underneath it. But at home you can take your time and allow more drying time so it's not as streaky. Unless you like the streaky. Maybe streaky works for you. That's fine too. Got a chance to see what tints and shades are all about and one technique to try, which is our forest. Um, I hope you guys go and take some of the supplies in your kick box and create lots of fun things and post your pictures on Instagram so that we can see what you creative people are up to. Thank you so much for joining us today.